We're going to talk today about how to handle Windows updates on computers running Deep Freeze. Now, a lot of folks um, ask us this question and ask us to show them how to set it up. So, I'm just going to do a quick video here to show you how to set up a maintenance or task or workstation task to download and install your Windows updates on an automatic basis. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that Deep Freeze does require that the computer get into what we call a thawed state so that updates can occur. So the computer needs to reboot, turn deep freeze off, and then we can go through and automatically download those updates on the client machine and get things up and running. Uh, the first thing you need to do is kind of figure out a time when you can run the updates. Now it's gonna vary depending on your business, what you do, how often machines are running, things of that nature. Um, generally speaking, you wanna pick some time when the computers are reasonably gonna be on, but no one's gonna need them. Um, if you're talking like, uh, say, for example, a high school, if class is let out at three, you might have some extracurricular activities, but generally you would imagine by about five o'clock, most of the computer labs will be cleared out and the machines will be free for you to do your maintenance tasks on it, Or you can go early, early, early in the morning. If the school doesn't open until 7 a.m., you can run them, you know, four or five in the morning. So the way that Deep Freeze Enterprise handles, main, handles Windows updates is through what we call an embedded task. And that's configured in the configuration administrator. And what we're going to do is we're just going to open up our previously created workstation install file here. Now, what we do is we go to the workstations task tab here. And what we can do is we can add a Windows update task. There's other options in there that allow us to schedule like restart, shutdowns, things of that nature. But we're going to concentrate on the Windows update specifically here. We're going to click add. And we can name this task if we want to run multiple schedules. I'm just going to leave it as the default. And we select what day and time we want this thing to run. In my case, um, I'm going to do this on Fridays. And what I'm going to do is say my office shuts down at 5. I want to do my Windows updates at 7 o'clock p.m. And I have two options here. I can either set it to run at a fixed period of time where the Windows updates will take a certain amount of time to run and to go and to be you know, input in. Or what I can do is I can run it until the updates are actually completed. I personally prefer running it until the updates are completed because what it does is instead of having a fixed period of time, I can shrink that down if there's no updates or I can extend it out if the updates are going to take a little longer. It makes, makes the configuration a little more flexible, gives me a little more options as to what I can do. The thing to keep in mind is because this does not have a fixed end time, I have to make sure that it's kind of the last set of tasks that I run. So if I wanted to run um, antivirus updates for a third party product or some other type of maintenance event, I want to do that before I run the Windows updates, just so that I don't run into a conflict. Um, there's a few options here I can configure. I can give my users the option to cancel the task. So it's the type of thing where it's a 24 seven environment and maybe there's going to be somebody there, but maybe not. I can give them the option to opt out of this so that I won't interrupt their day to day stuff. Um, I can also attempt to wake the computer up locally. So if the computer's in standby, uh, what I can do is I can bring the computer out of sleep so that the updates will occur anyway, because a computer that's shut down or sleeping, unless this option is selected, it won't be able to run the updates because it's effectively powered down. I can also select an option to shut the computer down after the task is complete, which is useful if I don't want them just sitting there chewing through power. By default, we do lock out the keyboard and mouse so that users can't interact with the system and can't uh, make any changes to the computer while it's sitting there running its maintenance period. This allows us to uh, avoid situations where a user might make unauthorized changes to the computer. I can configure how long my warning message is displayed, and I can configure that to be um, shown different options, like you know, call our help desk for more info, the computer shut down, here's a location for some alternates. Whatever options you want to have in there. So I'm going to hit OK here. Now, once I've added the Windows Update task, it's going to jump me over to the Windows Update settings. Now, there are a couple options in here that need to be kind of thought through and configured. So the first one is whether or not you're going to let us configure, can control how Windows Updates are downloaded. I recommend selecting this because what this does is this allows us to take control of the Windows Update service so that updates are only downloaded at a time that's appropriate for the computer. Um, Windows 10 is a lot more aggressive with its updates, and as such, you can run into problems where updates will try to download even when the computer is in a frozen state. When this option is selected, we take steps to prevent that from occurring so that you don't have to worry about it quite so much. 
uh, saves you bandwidth and potentially some issues as you're doing other maintenance tasks on the machine. We also have an option to cache Windows updates on client machines. So this allows us to create a virtual storage space so that updates can download through the course of the day and be installed on the client machine. Um, it helps to spread your, band, your load on the bandwidth out over the course of the day so that every machine is not trying to download them all at the same time. So if you're on a slower internet connection or you've got a large number of machines, that can be helpful. Um, we also have an option here as to where we're getting the updates from. By default, we get them from Microsoft Windows Update. So we'll go to the web and download them from there. If you want to download them from an internal server, a Windows Software Update Services or a WSUS server, we can do that as well. You just need to specify the address for your WSUS server, including port number. And if you have a target ID set, you'll enter that in here. Um, so student PC, just like so. Once these options are set, this is going to govern how our software is going to go about and download the updates and where it's going to get them from. Now, what I need to do is I now need to get this set of options to my client machines. So what I can do is I can create a new workstation install program. And this new install program will have all those settings kind of baked in and ready to go from the gate. Now, if you've followed through on my install from my previous video, what you'll want to do is you'll actually want to push out a configuration update so you don't have to reinstall the client machine. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as an RDX file. An RDX file is just a configuration file. It's not installable, but it's useful for pushing out configuration bits through our enterprise console. I'm going to give it a unique name there to save that. And now what I can do is I can go over to my enterprise console and what I can do is I can now go and update the configuration of the client machine with an RDX file. And I just go and browse to the appropriate location to get that file. And I can now push this out to the client machine and update the configuration. Enterprise, install programs, select that, hit open, and I'm done. So now this machine is now configured to do Windows updates at my specified time. And hopefully at that point I can just sit back and enjoy my tasty beverage of choice and watch my machines do their updates. Alternatively, the other thing that we can do is through the Enterprise Console, we can trigger Windows updates on an on-demand basis. So if you look up here, we have an option here to run Windows updates. So what you can do is you can click on that button and then it'll just automatically go run Windows updates and then return the computer to a protected state. Um, important thing to note with the updates, we only download security and critical updates. So if you're trying to do something like an optional update or a recommended update, we may not pick that up unless you're using a WSUS server. If you're using a WSUS server, we'll download everything. Um, just a difference in how the software updates are delivered. Uh, stuff coming from WSUS can be done completely unattended. Stuff from the Windows Update Service may require user interaction. So the only ones we can be sure of when we're going to the web are the critical and security updates. They don't require any interaction. So we'll download those and run them. And then on the WSUS, everything comes through without any interaction. So that's how to set up your Windows updates kind of in a nutshell. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to the support team. They're more than happy to answer any questions you have, and they're available Pacific time from about 7 a.m. Pacific time until 5 o'clock p.m. And uh, alternatively, you can drop us a quick email to support at pharonix.com or hit our support portal, uh, support.pharonix.com for more details. Again, thanks for joining us here. And, uh